Real Five Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Lisa Bravo, and Lisa is Executive Director of Family Service Agency. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. I'm glad to hear we're one of the favorite nonprofits in yes, town. Yes, you are. <laughs> oh boy, you are. I know so many people involved in FSA, oh gee. And so I know you have a lot of uh, exciting things going on there these days. We'd love to hear about it. Oh, sure. Uh, I, probably a, a couple important things to know is that we've merged with two agencies in the last couple years. One Gosh. is the Santa Maria Valley Youth and Family Center that is uh, centered right there in Santa Maria. Okay. And the other is is the Guadalupe Little House by the Park. Oh, so now you guys are all more. And so is everybody called Family Service Agency, or did they retain their names? Or? Retain their names, identity, okay, services. Okay, that's smart, I think. Yeah, so now we're in South County, as, and we have always been in Lompoc as well, and now Santa Maria and Guadalupe. <gasps> That's wonderful, and what a great model for other nonprofits to consider merging to be stronger together. Yes, that's, that's it exactly. I think it's very hard these days to be a small nonprofit and make yeah. it because things have gotten so complicated. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's pretty, and it's, it's not a secret, things are kind of competitive in Santa oh, Barbara yes, County. Oh yes, maybe just a little. Yes, so <laughs> it, is a, it is a lot easier to be together um, and to be, you know, putting in grant applications, determining the best types of services to provide, et cetera. So it's worked out really well. We're very happy. Gosh, how long ago did you do that? We uh, merged with Little House by the Park on July 1st, oh. became effective, and then Santa Maria Youth and Family Center, it was 2017, July 1st. So, so really? Pretty new. Yes, yes, quite, quite oh, recent. Well, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's really been wonderful to combine all of our staff expertise. It yeah. is making such a huge difference because we can share and uh, teach each other. Gosh, that is great. Mm -hmm. So now, I seem to remember that Family Service Agency has a lot of services, and you've been impacting the lives of people in our community for many, many, many years. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, I have tried to simplify it a little bit, and I always say that we provide two services, essentially. Okay. So one, one service is uh, basic needs and education okay. uh, for families and adults of, of all ages. So things like um, food, you know, clothing, we do help with housing where that's possible, it's kind of hard around here, mm -hmm. employment, sure. uh, parent education, healthy relationship education, we sign people up for health insurance or CalFresh. Oh gosh, that's the, the, great. The things that help families to become self-sufficient, because mm -hmm. all of us at some time in our lives need some help, right? Yeah, we know right. that, that's just the case. And if you're a parent, no matter what your resources are, you need help, because that's <laughs> one of the hardest <laughs> jobs <laughs> ever. That's so what we do is, is help uh, families and individuals through that tough time so they can be self-sufficient. So that's one thing. And then the other thing we provide is mental health counseling. Hmm. So it's kind of the whole continuum of services. So if, if um, sometimes, for example, when you're older and life is changing so much, mm -hmm. it helps to have some mental health counseling to try to work through all of those changes that yeah. are occurring. Yeah, yeah, sure. Or maybe you're a caregiver for mm. someone who's older, whether yeah. you're a younger person or an uh -huh. older person. Sure, sure. Caregiving is a pretty big job. Yeah. It can be pretty tough. So that mental health counseling can really help people cope with the challenges in life. So through those services, we impact about 24,000 people a year across the county, which Holy. is a lot. That is a lot. About 8,700, it's in-depth services, the rest information and referral mm -hmm. primarily. And we use, you know, we have evidence-based services, we use evidence-based tools and practices, so we're able to measure our impact, which oh, is gosh. fantastic. That is fantastic. 
So a couple outcomes that we have for the basic needs, for example, within six months of working with us, 91% of families have moved towards self-sufficiency, hmm. which is great. It um, is great, and it's great that you track that. Yes, yes. I think these days is particularly important because resources are limited. So we want to make sure that we're, we're measuring the effect of what we're providing so we can make changes if we're not being very effective. Gosh. It, it's just so important. That way we use the, re the resources most um, efficiently and, and effectively. Yeah, that's another great model for other nonprofits to use, making decisions by measuring and, and collecting data. Yes, continuous quality improvement. That, you know, that's what everybody's calling it these days, and it's a very um, significant part of our agency. Because the, you know, the people we're serving, the community residents, they tell us if things are working or not. And in the evidence-based tools that we use, we're able to measure if we're being effective, and then we can make changes right Gosh. away. Um, we had, for example, a we teach uh, healthy relationship education, which has mm -hmm. been a very popular course that mm -hmm. we have. And we found that it, in one particular session, there are 14 sessions, about in the middle, there was one particular session where oftentimes couples didn't come back the next time. Oh, golly. <laughs> so we started asking why. You know, we looked at the results, we talked to the people in the classes and found out that was the class where we were talking about difficult discussions. How do you have a difficult discussion oh. with your partner yeah. or your spouse? And as it turns out, in the class, they got into some pretty difficult discussions, so they didn't really want to come back next <laughs> time. Oh, no. So we figured out we really had to staff up that education session. We had to be really clear about what types of things to talk about. You know, debate things like Pepsi and Coke, not, you know, more right. serious issues. Yeah, yeah. So they could learn the skills of how to talk to Gosh. each other. So That's that a great example. Yes, it really has helped us to increase the retention rate in those classes because we haven't had the dropouts anymore since we figured that out. Gosh, good for you. Yes, yes. So with mental health uh, uh, and impact there, we actually, one of our mental health programs, we provide counseling in a lot of the schools in the county. Okay. Uh, right on site so the kids can access us really easily. And um, UCSB did a formal evaluation of our counseling in South County in Santa Barbara with uh, SBUSD this last year, and they found that through our services, there is a statistically significant reduction in um, things like depression mm. uh, and uh, post-traumatic uh, symptoms that people have. So That's we've been really able- important. Yes, yes. Measuring how we're doing and what we're doing is really important, and being able to show uh, people the, the impacts of, of the services so provided. How do people find out about your services? Our website is a great place okay. to go, and I know that's uh, going to be flashed up on the screen a few times, which yeah. is great. They can all just they can also just call us, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we can probably put our phone number up on the screen as well. Uh, we find that a lot of people come to us just through word of mouth anyway, because you know parents are talking yeah. to each other and they found out, find out that someone's utilizing the services. We do have our basic needs services co-located on a lot of school campuses, so easy oh, to access smart, yeah. for families because families are busy, and so yeah. we want to be where they can easily reach us. Gosh, very practical approach, <laughs> Lisa. Yes, 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 yes. So now um, we were talking earlier about how FSA is going to be uh, part of the Census 2020 work. Is that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the census is coming up April 1st. Mm -hmm. We've been uh, working with the census staff to understand about it. And I don't know if people know that what the census means to California, what it means to Santa Barbara County, what we receive is about $2,000 per person per year that is counted in the census. And that pays for services like the services yes. we provide. So in, in last time the census was conducted, about 10 years ago, California was under count by 900,000 people. Golly. That's like $1.8 billion yeah, yeah. a year. That, that we could have had. That we could have had. So we're, we're, uh, what we're doing is we are uh, participating with other organizations in Santa Barbara County. There's a complete count Santa Barbara committee. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are uh, gonna be outreaching to hard to reach populations 
And we are also going to be providing access. You know, the census this year is starting out online. So your first yeah. opportunity to fill it out is going to be online. Yeah. So we'll have computers at our sites across the county for people to use as well as support for them when they come in if they have questions about how to use a computer or how to get started. We will absolutely not fill out that census form for no, them, however. I, yeah, that's against the rules. Yes, we know <laughs> that we've got a challenge this year because of the. we have a lot of folks are afraid about filling out yes, the census. Yes, they are. And justifiably so. Yep. A lot of things yep. have been happening in the communities that are scary things. Mm -hmm. The great thing that we have learned from census staff is you can fill out the whole census form but not put your name in it, and it's still considered valid and complete. Well, that's good to know. Yes, yes. I bet a lot of people don't know that. Yes, we certainly didn't know that, and it's not doesn't appear to be written in a lot of materials either. So, so it's good to have conversations and find these things out. So we're really encouraging people to participate and mm -hmm. uh, trying to help answer their questions so that they see that it's an okay thing to participate in. So can a person fill out the questionnaire and not answer every single question, leave a, one or two unanswered, but still have their data counted? That's a good question. I'm not sure I know the complete answer. We've been told that you really do need to fill it mm -hmm. out fully. Mm -hmm. And actually, we received a copy of it already. Oh. If you're a one-person household, it's only uh, a two-side piece of paper that is very large print. So it's not very many details this oh, time good. around. That's good to know. Yes. So it's not as scary, perhaps, as it's been in the past. It's all very basic information. They're really just wanting to know how many people are in that dwelling that you're in. Well, thank you for being a part of that 20, uh, census 2020. And thanks to the Santa Barbara Complete Count Committee because they're doing a great job yes. of getting oh, organized I'm for it. I'm glad to hear that. Yes, yes. Many wow. agencies involved. So FSA um, does a lot of collaboration. Is that true? Yes, it is true. I always tell people that we actively collaborate because mm -hmm. we know that we can't provide everything an individual or family needs. Mm -hmm. So we actively collaborate with other organizations so that together we can provide the full continuum of services. Okay. For example, we collaborate with the local libraries. They often have literacy programs, okay. which we don't provide at our agency. Or we don't provide alcohol drug treatment, so we collaborate with other agencies that do. So it's the way that we can all provide a full continuum of services, and it's also a way that community residents can feel um, safe Mm -hmm. in, in accessing services because they feel safe coming to yeah. FSA so yep. we can link them with an agency that's also safe and they don't have to worry quite so much. Yeah. Now, how long have you been around? Long time. Uh, since 1899. Oh, God. I knew it was long, <laughs> but I didn't know that. Our first, I looked at our report from the first year of operation. So we provided milk to oh. people, firewood, uh, sometimes food. So it was the basic needs assistance, yeah. just as we provide now. Golly. We have evolved a little bit since then, yes, yes. but still just as relevant as we were then. Gosh, and so you've been there six years now? Yes, yes. Uh, and what a delightful agency to work with. We have a wonderful board of directors, oh. lots of community support. It's been quite a joy to that be able is, to be there. That is great. Yes. So I bet in that six years you've probably seen a thing or two, and maybe you have a story you might want to share with us? Yes, actually, we, we um, our staff talk about what's happening all, all the time uh, with the people that we're, that we're serving. We're actually gonna be filming a video here pretty soon of one of our stories about a, a school counselor who happened to notice in a student's notebook that they were writing some things about thinking about suicide. Oh, golly. And then our intervention in providing assistance for that youth so that so that, that was no longer something that was part of their thought process, I guess, or something that they were contemplating doing. Mm. We found that our school counseling services um, do reduce suicide attempts mm -hmm. and completed suicides, which is huge. Yeah, it's it huge. sure is. When we're actually providing a service now called mental health uh, first aid training in, in partnership with the Mental Wellness Center and mm. the Youth Well Coalition. Wow, that's a great collaboration. Yes, and we are providing education for adults who work with youth about how to identify possible signs mm -hmm. of kids contemplating uh, suicide or having some other type of mm -hmm. mental health mm -hmm. challenge and then what to do when they notice it, what the resources are, how to talk to the youth, how to connect the youth to services. Gosh. In the first year, this is a federal grant, a new federal grant we received as a partnership. Uh, last year was our first year. We served over, we taught over 500 adults. Mm. 
and now we have moved it from South County to Lompoc and Santa Maria, and we'll have a similar number this second year. Gosh, that's something to be proud of. Yes, the school districts have really stepped right in. They're so excited to receive the training. Carpinteria, Santa Gosh. Barbara, we're now working with Lompoc Unified, Santa Maria Benita, as well as uh, the Santa Maria Joint Union High School District. It's a great partnership, um, and we're training parents, school staff, anyone who's working with youth. Gosh, that is such important work you're doing. Yes. And I really appreciate you coming on 805 Focus and sharing that with us. Thank you. Thank yes, you. And so thank you for all the important and good work that you're doing in our community. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. Yes. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.